Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz is at the controls of a strange spaceship in another galaxy. Happy is nearby in the Terra 5. In contact by miniature space phone, they plan to rescue a fellow Space Patrol pilot. That enemy ship is gaining on Norfield, Commander. If I pulled ahead now, maybe I could draw him off. No, Happy. He'd get you a Norfield boat. I'd stand a better chance than you because I'm in an enemy ship. Hey, that's great. Hey, he'll think you're his buddy. Now stick close, Hap, as though the Terra 5 were still captured. Yes, sir. If we can fool that enemy pilot for a few minutes more, we can rescue Norfield. Uh-oh. Commander, this is terrible. What is it, Hap? I just picked up the enemy commander's space phone channel. He knows we've escaped. He just gave that enemy pilot orders to blast both our ships. We'll return in just a moment with a thrilling story, The Lost Galaxy. Say, Commander, you coming to the Christmas party oh, today? Sure I have. Wouldn't miss it for anything. Space Patrol parties have always been so warm and jolly, just like family Christmas get-together. Gee, they certainly are a treat for those of us who don't get to go home. And say, you ought to see what Captain Tufeld has cooked up for refreshments. I knew you'd be in on that. Well, Chuck, as head of the entertainment committee, I had to be sure everything would be right. And, well, uh, of course, I wanted to help, so, well, let's see. Uh, what was I saying now? Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got a whole raft of sensational Toll House cookies made with Nestle's cookie mix and Nestle's semi-sweet morsels and brownies and plenty of fancy cookies, too. A couple of platters of them. That's for me. Wait, that's not all. We've got all Nestle's chocolate bars. Milk chocolate, almond, crunch, and the new coconut bar. Big ones, too. Oh, sounds fine. Go on. Well, we'll have our choice of drinks. Cold chocolate milk made with Nestle's Quick or Nestle's Ever Ready for hot cocoa. Oh, that's a splendid spread, huh? I really must congratulate the food committee. Oh, just one thing. Try not to eat all that good food before the rest of the gang gets there, will you? Smoking rockets, Commander. Well, smoking rockets is all I can say. Uh, of course, there'll be plenty of food for everybody, but, uh, well, if I were you, I wouldn't get there too late. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Galaxy. A United Planet Space Observatory out beyond the Pluto orbit has been picking up strange electromagnetic impulses from a remote part of the galaxy. Tests revealed a pattern that scientists could interpret only as signals, radio signals produced by intelligent beings in an uncharted region of space. Commander Corey dispatched four star drive spaceships to investigate. Equipped with transmitters that operate through hyperspace, the expedition kept up its regular schedule of reports for two days. But now, for 24 hours, not one of the four ships has been heard from. Buzz has called Cadet Happy to the central office in Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra. Did we finally get word from Expedition Enigma, Commander? No, it happened. I'm worried. The last report was received 24 hours ago from Captain Northfield. Oh, and we missed 12 reports. Yes. Whatever happened must have happened to all the ships simultaneously. Yeah. Or one of them could have faced upon the warning. We know from our own experience that hyperspace transmission of signals is not as perfect. Hey, uh, how about that space observatory out there on Pluto? Are they still receiving those mysterious signals? Yes, that proves nothing. Those signals are coming through regular space. They're past the point where we last heard from Northfield about half a million light years ago. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell us a thing about what's happening out there now? There's one way to find out. They'll go after them. I'm all for that, sir, but we'll, uh, how will we know where they are? One thing's certain. We'll be half a million light years closer than we are now. Let's go. Now, for the first time in the entire history of the vast black sock star system, an atmosphere of tense excitement pervades the headquarters of the Guardian of the Galaxy. Only Makor, the Guardian, retains his usual calm as he discusses alarming news of his chief aide, Sindrana. You have heard the report, I suppose, Sindrana? Yes, sir. And I assume you want me to issue a denial of this preposterous rumor and spread it throughout the galaxy. It is not a rumor. It is fact. Space of phone conversation in an unknown language have been picked up at several different points. But do you realize what you're saying, Excellency? You are saying that there is intelligent life outside of the Graxox star system. Certainly. Isn't that why we have a guardian? There is no danger of attack from inside. Therefore, our function is to be prepared for trouble from outside. But that's 
just superstition, a fairy tale, a game children play. The idea that Jack's art should be attacked. Tendrana! Are you accusing me of being a figurehead? No, Tendrana. That this service is a farce, a mockery? No, 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 it's just a typical... For generations, there's been no sign of intelligent life anywhere but in Jack's art. Just the same. And the signals intercept that four spaceships are moving through our galaxy. But there isn't much danger. Four ships couldn't conquer the galaxy. The signals we have picked out may be merely the advanced scout of a vast fleet of ships. These scouts must be located and destroyed. But their weapons may be far more powerful than ours. A race of beings that could come here from another galaxy. Why, they must surpass us in intelligence. Yes, the way we surpass a toad. Thanks to our far-sighted ancestors who planned our defense 30 generations ago, we wouldn't be entirely helpless. We have so few armed spaceships, and not enough men trained to fly what ships we have. One weapon is already in operation. The electronic signal detector. But if the enemy is already within our galaxy, what good will it do? Uh, we'll keep him from contacting any of his attack force at a great distance from our solar system. And at a closer distance, the curved signals will confuse the enemy. Our own ships will also be confused. Yes, but to a lesser degree. Some of our ships have deflection detectors, so they can compensate for the effect. If we work fast and efficiently, we can rid ourselves of the intruders. I shall be glad to offer my services in any way. You will take a starship and blast off immediately to a point near to the perimeter of our galaxy. Here are your detailed orders. Meantime, Buzz and Happy and the Terra 5 have emerged from Star Drive at the approximate point where Captain Norfield gave his last report. While Happy carefully watches the view space, Buzz makes repeated attempts to contact the missing space patrol ships. Men of Corey aboard Terra 5 calling all units of Expedition Enigma. Corey to all units of Expedition Enigma. No sighting yet, Commander. Oh, the ships may be out of range, Captain. Probably still heading for the interior of the galaxy. Yeah. And on top of that, they're spreading out in different directions. And my guess is they went to the star drive again so they could reach the source of those signals right quickly. Yeah. And when they came out, something happened before they could space them back to town. I'll try once more and look in the star drive. Mandacori aboard Terra 5, calling units of Expedition Enigma. Give me some sort of signal if you can as I call your name. Lieutenant Beaker. Lieutenant Stitter. Lieutenant Marsden. Captain Norfield. Norfield here, Commander. Sinlin Comets, at last. Well, it's good to hear your voice, Captain. Are you in trouble? No, outside of being a trifle lost. What about the other boys? I haven't heard from any of them for several hours, Commander. After we fanned out, we had trouble making contact by space aboard. Have you been making your reports to Terra? Yes, sir. Two hour intervals. Haven't they been received? And our last contact with you was your 1600 hour report yesterday. I haven't heard any space patrol signals since that time either, until now. Whatever the interference was, it's okay now. Reading you fine, just as clear as if you were in this galaxy. Norfield, I am in the galaxy. Happy and I blasted off to see what had happened to you. Well, now that you're here, sir, I can tell you this. It's good to have company. Something is wrong, Norfield. It's my instruments, Commander. The astrogation bank especially. They're out of adjustment. That's one of the reasons I lost contact with the other ships. What was the last contact? With Lieutenant Stitter, sir. He said he had sighted a planet that looked pretty good and he was going to investigate it. By pretty good, did he mean he was receiving those mysterious signals from it? I assumed he meant that, Commander, that being the purpose of the expedition. Right then he faded out. After that, I noticed that my space upon fix on Stitter didn't check with my astrogation instruments. Well, this is serious, Northfield. If your astrogation instruments are off, you can't plot a hyperspace vector for a return to Terra. And at this half million light year distance, the error could be tremendous. Yes, I know. I've been trying to locate the trouble. Well, hold your present vector. We'll follow your space upon signal until we pick you up in our view scope. Very good, sir. You've got to correct those instruments of yours, Captain. Put on your ID signal and we'll write it in. In his headquarters, Makor, the guardian of Graxok, has finally contacted his chief aide, Sindrana, after considerable difficulty. I've been trying to contact you. What have you been up to? Sorry, Excellency. It's these deflection fields. They're playing havoc with communications. Have you located any of the enemy ships? Not visually, Makor. However, I have picked up two space phone conversations. Uh, that is, I assume they were conversations. Okay. Isn't your translator working? I've tried all the regular circuit combinations with the galaxy languages, Makor. I don't think our translator will handle non-galaxy speech. All right, all right. Don't waste any more time. They are probably exchanging information for an attack. 
quicker you destroy them, the better. The Alpha Ray will destroy all forms of life higher than ours. It was designed for this specific purpose. It is hard to have confidence in a weapon that one has never seen used, and one that hasn't even been tested for ten centuries. It will work. It was designed according to scientific principles. When directed properly toward our enemies, the Alpha Ray will destroy them. Proceed as commander. With Captain Marfield's identification signals sounding in their spaceophone receiver, Buzz and Happy speed to contact their fellow space patroller. Hey, what's happening to the signal? We're getting closer to Northfield, so we well, should be coming in stronger. Oh, there's a strange drift operating here, huh? An electromagnetic drift. We'll hold this back, but maybe it'll clear up again. Come in, the view scope. There's a ship. Good. Apparently the drift isn't affecting the view scope frequency. Well... For a minute there, I was afraid we'd lost Captain Northfield. And we're a few DUs closer. We'll try contacting him. Another frequency. Captain's transmitter must have failed completely, sir. As close as we are to his ship, we surely ought to be able to... Now, that's not a space patrol ship. Hey, it sure isn't. But then what ship is it? Probably a patrol ship from this galaxy investigating us. Cut on the frequency scanner. See if we can pick up a signal from him. I'll put in the translator. Right, sir. Tres vod ne mako. Donya grabek tsurila. Hold it down. Yes, sir. Piti alano. Ay, rip. Toba. Was out of kun. Is he talking to us? I'll try some other translator said he was. Akagosi grada. Grada kukru. It's another voice. Same channel. The sunny prusline. Plain. Oh, he sure sounds like Sunny. Tres voba. Rek. Riala. The enemy is in range. You got it, sir. Peace. No more time. Destroy them. I make him understand how to put on the transmitter. Yes, sir. Sindrana, this is the pilot of the ship you regard as an enemy. Can you hear me? I know. Did you hear that? Hear what? That voice that spoke to me by name in our language. Draxok. Yes, I spoke to you. I have an instrument that can translate most languages. We're here on a peaceful mission. They say they're on a peaceful mission. Can you hear them? No, I can't. You have your orders. Destroy them. Very well, Mikko. I will use the ultimate. Stand the rest of it. that in turn. Port and stop. I can't move. I've used the altar ray, Maycor. The enemy is destroyed. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, let's go around and see Captain Tito and see all the Christmas parties coming along. Hi there, Captain Tito. Oh, hi, Tony. Miss Carol asked me to come over and see if there was anything I could do to help you. Well, Tony, it's mighty nice of you to drop in, and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, Captain. This boss has some extra cookies for Carol Bakeford. Mm. Look, she made lots of tool house cookies with Nestle's cookie mix and Timmy sweet morsels. And here are brownies. Oh, boy, and Santa Claus cookies and chocolate tin wheels. Gee, it makes me hungry just to think about it. May I have another? Hey, easy there, Tony. Let's not eat up the whole party before it starts. <laughs> okay. Say, I hope you've got plenty of Nestle's chocolate bars. Why, sure thing. See, this whole basket's full of milk chocolate, almond, crunch, and the new Nestle's coconut bar. How's that? How does this universe? I'm glad you got the big size. What's to drink? Plenty of milk in the thermal freeze and plenty of Nestle's quick. So we can make all the delicious chocolate milk you can drink. And a big supply of Nestle's Everetti Cocoa for all those who want something hot. Smoking rocket. If this party isn't the greatest, well, it ought to be super cosmic. Well, Tony, I certainly hope so. The gang's been looking forward to Christmas and our little celebration. But right now, we better get the presents started and piled up. Now, no fair peaking. I'll see you at the party later. Boy, you can bet on that. I'll be the first through the door. I want to be sure half doesn't beat me to the refreshments. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Galaxy. Buzz and Happy are in a remote galaxy to find four lost Space Patrol ships. Fearing an invasion, the guardian of the galaxy dispatched his chief aide, Sindrana, to destroy every strange ship encounter. Using his electronic translator, Buzz was able to establish contact with Sindrana. Despite the commander's protest that he was on a peaceful mission, Sindrana discharged a weapon that for centuries has been kept in readiness for a possible invader. Confident that he's destroyed his enemy, Sindrana reports to Makor, guardian of the Graxox star system. 
The enemy ship is continuing its original course, Nacor. You, you change your course, Sandrana? Yes, there's a test. The ship is not attempting to follow me. Therefore, its pilot and other occupants, if any, have been eliminated by the ultra ray. Well, then board it. By studying the controls, you will probably be able to cut off its power. Then it can be easily brought to our main spaceport. Very good. I'll board this ship. Be very careful. Be sure the seal is tight around their airlock before you enter. But I'll be using a spacesuit. Of course you will. But I want to preserve the air within their ship. It will tell us about the type of worlds they come from. There may be a period when I'll be out of contact with you. The space phone in my spacesuit isn't powerful enough to reach your headquarters. Then simply relay it to your ship transmitter. Now hurry. Get aboard that enemy ship. Meantime, Buzz and Happy lie motionless on the deck of the terrifier, just as they fell when Sandrana discharged the ultra ray. Moments pass. Then a slight movement, a twitch of Happy's fingers. Now the commander's eyelids flicker. Are you okay? I guess I'm sort of numb, fuzzy headed. Hey. I can move my arms a little bit now. Wow, that ultra ray, whatever it is, sure packs a lot. Yes, but lucky for us, not as much as it was supposed to. I'm in the airlock of the enemy ship, Nico. Yeah, it's coming out of our space again. Be sure there is no leak as you enter the ship. The outer hatch is closed tight. Now I'm opening the inner hatch. These beings from another galaxy. There are two of them lying here in the control compartment. At the... Stop gibbering. Naturally, they are complex monsters. They cannot fight. You don't understand. Makor, they're human. They're just like you and me, human beings. Not for the appearance, perhaps. But the ultra ray destroyed all that was really different about them. They're super intelligent, yes. yes. I've just looked at my atmosphere analyzer unit. The air in this ship is similar to that on many of our planets. I'm going to take a chance and lift my helmet face piece. Ordinary air. And the temperature is very comfortable. I'll get to work and figure out their controls. Right, right away. Strange that these with heads no larger than ours are capable of such fast and You are trying my patience in Branagh. Just one close look. Amazing. In different clothes, they, they could pass for an inhabitant of any of our... They're alive. Bet we are. I'll handle them, Hap. Make what they're alive, they're... It's in Branagh. What's happening out there after me? Hap, they're all hostiles. They're going to pass, but I'll try to cut out some guns. Yes, sir. It's in Branagh. Is something wrong? Can you hear me? Are we having trouble with the reception again? Transmitters are trouble to receive it, too. Can you handle that guy, sir? Yes. I'll be one of those portable translators. We'll need it to talk to somebody. Okay, take him While I'm talking to him, you try to pick up that ID signal from Captain Northfield's ship. Right, sir. Uh, hey, here's the miniature translator, sir. I'll adjust it for you. And that's for reading for the big job in the control panel. Oh, hold still, you. Clip it to my belt. I'll uh, explain to you, sir. John, we'd better hurry. He's half out of his mind with terror. It should work now, sir. Thanks. Sir. Now listen, Sandrana. Quiet down, you won't get hurt. I'm going to let you go now. But don't try anything. We have weapons here that are a little more effective than your alpha ray. Understand? I understand. I came here to rescue four scout ships on a scientific mission. Our scientists picked up space phone signals from your galaxy. They sent out an expedition to find out where they came from. I see you don't believe me. But it's the truth. Anyway, the expedition's reports were cut off. Apparently, there's some sort of interference originating in this galaxy. Then our reflecting field is successful. You can't contact your invasion fleet. Reflecting field? Yes. Electromagnetic waves, including space phone signals, are slightly bent. Yes. And between galaxies, the error would be enormous. Yes. It's like playing billiards with a bent cue on a warped table. Really? Oh, one of your super-intelligent games. <laughs> Not the way I play it. Hey, Commander. You picked up Captain Morfield. Good. I'll try to contact him. Keep an eye on some John. Yes, sir. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Captain Northfield. Commander Corey to Captain Northfield. Northfield here, Commander, and busy. What's the trouble? Seems I'm not popular in this galaxy, sir. Some of the local talents on my tail throwing cool 
away for us, Zappy. They're not candy and flowers. Explosives? The large economy size. We got something a little different, but we're okay now. How many ships are after you? Just one, but he'll do. I fired everything at him but the space rations. Now I'm down to evasive tactics only. Keep your ID signal on. We'll join you. Hurry out. Thanks, Commander. I'll be seeing you. I hope. Zimbrana, get on the space phone and call off that attack. Even if you force me, I have no authority over that other Grachok pilot. Nacor is in supreme command. I right, hope you don't waste time. You've got to separate our ship from Zimbrana so we can maneuver and catch up with Northfield. Yes, you take the control. I'll take Zimbrana into his ship. Now get going, Zimbrana. Into the airlock. In the Grachok ship a moment later, Buzz forces the half frightened and half defiant Zimbrana to the control panel. All right, Zimbrana. Cut your ship loose from ours. No tricks. You, you can't force me to fight against my own people. If you weren't so thick-headed, you'd understand there's no reason for a fight. I call off that pilot and we'll leave you alone. All we want to do is get back to our own galaxy. Good happy to Commander Corey. Corey here, Hap. Sandrana's acting stubborn. He won't cut Terra 5 loose. Sir, I've just sighted Northfield in the view scope. That Graxock pilot is giving a rough time, sir. So we'll join the battle, Hap. You have to do all the work. You'll find it tough to overcome the extra inertia of this ship plus its rocket flight. Yeah, like being in a boxing match with a keg of nails under one arm. Uh, but if I can get on another pilot's tail and fly a fairly straight approach, well, I can let him have a blast with our atom cannons. That's the way it'll have to be, Hap. Right. If that pilot sees I'm firing at him, he's going to fire back. And we'll be as helpless as a couple of sitting ducks with locked wings. Wait. Wait, I, I, I'll cut your ship loose. I thought you came to me. <laughs> Ship was separated. But I won't join the fight. Hap, you're free. The Terra 5 is on its own now. Commander, the enemy ship is gaining on Norfield. If I pulled ahead now, maybe I could draw him off. No, Hap. You'd get you and Norfield both. I'd stand a better chance because I'm in one of the Draxox ships. Hey, that's great. A stick close, Hap. As though the Terra 5 was still captured. Yes, sir. Yeah, if we can keep that guy fooled for a few minutes more, we can rescue Norfield. Uh oh. Hey, Commander, this is terrible. What is it, Happy? I just picked up the enemy commander's space phone channel. He knows we've escaped. Just gave that enemy pilot orders to blast both our ships. You heard that, Sandra. You're in for Let me take this ship away from here. If you run out, Happy will have to blow up that other ship. The pilot is of your own galaxy. Don't you want to save him? He has his orders for Mako. Now, look, just stun him if you're out there. The way you did Happy, and it won't hurt him. it will save his life. You can tell Mako it was an accident. Commander, shall I go after that Graxock pilot? Fire some bracket shots around him. To get him off Norfield. I'm going to try to operate the Ultra Ray myself. You can't do it. Even with your superior intelligence, the theory I'm beginning to doubt. I see. This control might be right. No, I'm second. Oh, oh, while you're playing with those controls, my fellow Draxock pilot will destroy your friend Happy. Now, keep still and let me alone. I see. Now, Corey. <laughs> I made the most strategy work. I knew I would get you off guard. The fact that you try to interfere, I'll use your own weapon on you. What are you going to do? Yes. I'm going to focus the Alpha Ray on your Terra 5 and take Happy out of the fight. Things are worse a bit. So, now the Alpha Ray. Don't touch that switch. Let me tell you now, Corey. When I throw this switch, your cadet will be... Stand back, Corey. I, I'll fire. I, I warn you. I'll take my gun back to the runner. I forgot to tell you the safety vision. The gun won't fire unless you test this lock. Let me take the gun away from you. I'll kill it, Jimmy. I wanted to find out how the altar ray works, so I let you show me. Commander, Sindrana's pal is firing at us. Shall I let him have it? I know, Hap. This altar ray will take care of him. Stay where you are, Sindrana. This way, Hap. I hope that got him. I think it did, sir. He was using evasive action all over space, and now he's on a straight vector. Keep an eye on him, Hap. That's Sindrana. Call me, Hap. Of course. Get on that space phone and tell him what happened to his pilot. All right, I'll, I'll tell him. Chief Aid Sindrana calling Makor, guardian of Draxon. Makor to former Chief Aid Sindrana. Why had you? It wasn't my fault. The, the Ultra Ray is a failure. Not quite, Makor. It took care of your other assassin. What? What's that, Sindrana? One of the invaders. He turned the Ultra Ray and my ship on our other pilot. Yes, and right now he's unconscious and headed out of the galaxy. If you want to save him, you'd better listen to reason. You the Ultra Ray one of our people? A barbaric? You invaders? We're not invaders. All we want to do is get out of your galaxy and return home. 
I cut off the electromagnetic deflector so we can set an accurate vector on our star drive. I cut off the deflectors, your whole attack force will stream into our galaxy. We don't have an attack force, but suppose we did. Suppose we took a chance and got home with your two men, Sandrana and that pilot. We know the secret of your deflectors, your ships, and all your defenses. We'll give Sandrana a chance to rescue that other pilot. We can bring both your ships safely back to base. Please, Excellency. Do as he says. All right, Corey. I'll order the deflectors cut off. Fine. Happy, are you with us? Yes, sir. Sandrana and I will overtake that other ship that may cause. Now, cut off the translator. Someone may be listening. Yes, sir. All clear, sir. Trail me to the other ship. I know a few rope tricks that'll keep Sandrana and his pal from using their ultra rays and space cannon until we're on our way in Terra 5. Yes, sir. We've got a job to do before we return to Terra. We've got to find those other three ships of the expedition. Captain Norfield, Commander, pardon my interrupting, but can I get in on this project? Well, it's back to Terra for you, Norfield. Happen I can handle it. I don't doubt that, Commander. Thanks for saving my life. And I want to include Cadet Happy in on that, too. We'll see you on Terra, Captain. Happen I have got a few chores to do. Good luck, Commander. Norfield out. Hey, Commander, something's been bothering me. I feel sort of insulted. Insulted? How? Well, about that ultra ray. It's supposed to destroy intelligent people. And it only stunned us. I guess we must be pretty dumb. Well, think of it this way, huh? Would you have felt any better if the ultra ray had proved you were a genius? Gee, no. I, I wouldn't be around to feel anything. I, hey, I guess sometimes it's uh, it's smart to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, (laughs) good. Say, Hap, Dick, Carol, Robbie, Tony, everybody, it was a wonderful party and the best Christmas day we've ever had. The presents, entertainment, the messages, the questions, they couldn't have been better. I want to thank one and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, I'd like to make a little speech, and this is serious, James. To all our radio friends, I'd like to wish the very happiest of Christmases. We're real glad to have had you with us at our party today, and we hope you'll be around for lots more parties to come. And I'd like to add a word from the Nestle Company, which sends its sincerest wishes for a merry and warm Christmas to all its friends from coast to coast. Have a wonderful day. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Mars and Happy have landed on a strange planet in a remote galaxy in their spacesuit. They've boarded a stranded spaceship to rescue a fellow space patroller. Buzz carries the wounded pilot into the airlock. Open the outer hatch, Hap. Yes, sir. Hey, what's that sound? Take a look outside. Come in. That stream of liquid, or that metal, or whatever it is, is rising up all around the ship. And the ladder's gone. Dissolved. Hap, we're stranded in a river of corrosive acid. If we don't get out of here, it'll dissolve the entire ship and us with it. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, Ambush in Space. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moses, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moses. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Tony Side. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday for exciting action on Space Patrol! This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.